What is going on guys? My name is Rage and we are back today with another video guide and playthrough for you all. This is going to be a continuation video uh, following Doom Chapter 3-7. It's going to be the next node now being 3-8. Uh, with that being said, it is going to be the exact same roster I utilized in my previous video. So let's go ahead and talk about the characters I'll be utilizing. Got Sherry here at 56k. As you can see, no T4s upgraded on her abilities. Additionally, she is at tier 13 with the 4 red. And for her ISO 8, I am utilizing a level 3 healer just to provide some additional healing and sustainability. Next, working hand in hand with Sherry for the sustain and protection. It's giving me rescue here. I have her at tier 11, 53k with the 4 red. No T4s on her abilities. And consistent with Sherry, she's also going to have the level 3 ISO 8 healer just for that active healing and helping out our team, uh, making sure they're staying alive and keeping them protected. Next, it's going to be Falcon, providing speed up for our team. Got him at 51k with the 5 red. And um, no T4s on his abilities, but he is a level 3 raider here, just to provide some additional damage, especially since the raider does increase his critical hits and critical hit damage. Next, uh, additional DPS is going to be War Machine at tier 10 at 50k. As you can see here, I do have War Machine as well here uh, with no T4s. And it's going to be similar to uh, Falcon where with the level 3 Raider just to provide the additional damage, critical hits. And um, it's really him and Falcon that are going to be providing a lot of damage with their a AoE. Last but not least here, uh, to really tie it all together, it's going to be Ironheart. Tier 11, 49k, and she is at the lowest with the 4 red, but that's why I boost her up and bring her to the tier 12, uh, excuse me, tier 11 gear. In addition, I did also provide a T4 upgrade to both her ultimate as well as her passive, so let's go through that real quick. Um, for her ultimate here, it ensures that the defense down applies to enemies for two turns. This is really, really crucial uh, for us to increase our overall damage, especially against these characters that have significant, significantly more power than us and uh, being significantly stronger as well. Last but not least, the passive Prodigy here is upgraded to additionally provide um, additional max health to the power armor allies, extra resistance, and last but not least, increased armor. So really, Ironheart's really going to be the difference maker here, really keeping our team alive, especially um, providing those active bonuses. And consistent with both Shuri as well as Rescue, she's also got the level 3 ISO 8 healer here, just to ensure that we have active healing and uh, increasing our overall regeneration in the battle. So that's my roster there, you guys. Let's dive right into the gameplay for uh, Chapter 3-8. placement will be exactly the same as my previous node uh, with Rescue and Ironheart being separated by Shuri as well as my damage dealers Falcon War Machine being on the right side um, really just putting the squishier targets with the damage dealers that way it keeps them separated now unlike the last node however we are going to be facing up really really uh, up against a significant high damaging team that includes Ghost Rider, Mortal as well as Hela, protected by Invisible Woman. For some very beginning this time, we are going to activate Shuri's special just to apply the defense up on our team, unlike the last node, because we want the protection right away here, um, especially with uh, Rescue being able to apply her special to give us the barrier. Really, at the beginning of this node, um, it's going to be extremely difficult because they're going to unleash all their attacks on us, and um, if your team can't withstand that damage at the beginning, then you know you almost have to almost reset and there's a reason behind this it's because in this node we actually do get uh dr doom on our side here so we're gonna go ahead use falcon speed up and as you can see from once everyone's taking the turn uh dr doom does appear on our side and that's very fortuitous for us hopefully at this point um the rng's in your factor where as you saw ghost rider actually targeted our dr doom so he didn't actually in impact any of the members on our team and we're going to go ahead and start our power armor combo here activating rescues ultimate to apply offense up followed by iron heart iron hearts defense down on the team we're going to use now war machines ultimate to apply that offensive outburst followed by falcons ultimate as well so as you can see that does clear the majority of the first wave and that's exactly what's key it's going to take a little bit of luck it took me a few tries to get that correct because um ghost rider using his ability at the beginning if he doesn't target dr doom Hopefully your, your ally actually survives that attack. But fortunately at this stage, um, it's just going to be Invisible Woman and Heimdall. Um, it, it was good for me with these two being the last two. So I can actually buy my time and really kind of build up my Doom army here. Because how Doom operates is that every turn he does have a clone that actually gets summoned on our side. In addition, I'm taking advantage of this moment to actually heal up, get my team's energy up in preparation for the next wave. So once again, you guys, uh, Falcon, really, really pivotal here. His speed up is really essential for our team, really being able to kind of buy us time, generate our energy up, 
And really, we're just gonna go ahead and just save our abilities, um, slowly taking down Invisible Woman in preparation for the next wave. And with that being said, it does spawn the last seven here, as you guys can see. Another Hela with two Lokis, as well as two Venoms, a Thor. And um, the key for this one is really being able to utilize Doom from the get-go. So um, for Doom, um, because we have so many clones, we are going to go ahead and use his ability there to sacrifice his clone. But it does burst the damage to their team. Unfortunately, it doesn't, um, doesn't take any of them out, but it just applies some extra damage that, that's going to help us in this situation. And um, you're going to see, once again, Hela does a significant amount of damage. So that's why it's really crucial uh, when we ever, whenever we get rescue, we got to go ahead and use her special there to give us that barrier to really kind of help us out, apply that regen. In addition, um, we're going to go ahead. Uh, the Hela, Hela and uh, Thor, in my opinion, are the two that need to go down first in this initial wave. Uh, Venom is tanky, but he can ability block. He can help us. He can bleed, but he really isn't really a high damaging target. Um, it's really going to be... Hela uh, uh, and Thor, as well as the Lokis that do the more DPS on this team here. So once again, um, fortunately, because of our saved up energy, we're going to prepare for our power armor combo here. So we're going to speed up. I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to activate Falcon's ultimate there just because I do want to take these guys down as soon as possible. Uh, sometimes you, all the pieces may not align in the sense that um, you have all the abilities that you need. But fortunately, now rescue his ultimate's up. So I activated that. And we are going to go ahead and take advantage of the offense up, um, especially with Rescue's ultimate being activated now. And as you guys can see, uh, with, uh, with Loki's illusions, that is going to be what's also pesky. But fortunately, this is why it's nice that we have Dr. Doom, because he does have that AoE burst damage. And um, it does help out. Didn't take out any of them, but I mean, it, it allowed the ability to, for us to take their evade away, which helped there. As you can see, we were able to wipe that out. And once again, you guys, I love War Machine's um, uh, uh, basic attack. Even that has an AOE burst. And really at this point, it's just a matter of luck and being able to kind of land those AOE attacks. As you can see, uh, taking out both uh, Thor as well as Hela does, um, you know, help us significantly in this battle. And as you can see there with the offensive outburst, um, it's going to take a little bit of timing and luck. Took me a few tries to get that. It made it look easy, but definitely this node was not easy. Um, it would have been nice to actually three-star it, but as you can see, that is the overall strategy. Really taking out that offensive outburst in the very beginning and kind of building up your energy in preparation for the last wave. So there you guys have it. Um, that's 3-8 as well now, and I'm going to prepare and make a video on the final note. But thank you as always, you guys, for watching. I do appreciate you taking the time. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.